Raison. I'm on the steering committee for the U.S. Psych Congress. I'm here with Dr. Tim Williams from Harvard, an uh, expert on ADHD. Talk to us a little bit about what we're learning about the impact or non-impact of medications we use to treat ADHD on, on the developing brain. Well, that is a real scary question to a lot of people. Certainly a lot of parents are worried about it. A number of practitioners have been concerned about that for years. Yeah. Here, here we are giving uh, kids 11 and 12 years of age stimulant medications, hopefully if they need them through their adolescence and maybe far beyond. And we now have a lot more information on that. In fact, there was a recent large meta-analysis that examined that issue. It turns out there's almost 30 studies on this, including structural studies, how the brain, the actual structure of the brain, how the brain functions, and then looking at the neuronal, neuronal um, interactions. The studies seem to be converging and finding the following. Number one, that it's the unmedicated ADHD kid that has the most differences in their brain structure and function relative to controls. When you medicate the ADHD kids, even over years, they turn out to look more like non-ADHD kids. So we actually think there's almost a normalization, not only in the function, how the brain's working, but also in the structure, the thickness of the brain. Yeah. So at the very least, we know that these medicines aren't neurotoxic. We think that they're not just neutral, but we actually think that they're neuroprotective. Interesting. And do you think that's because the medicines themselves are doing something direct? Or do you think it's because they're allowing kids to have more normal sort of interactions with the world, which then wire the brain more normally? Does anybody... Well, you know, that's a $64 million question. It really is now to that point. Again, you know, for years we were worried, geez, are these neuro neurotoxic? Then we went to neutral. Yeah. Now we have enough data to say that they're actually neuroprotective, but why are they neuroprotective? And what about effects on, on stature, and blood pressure, and, and, and sort of uh, you know, peripheral physiologic? That, that also is of concern. So start a little bit with stature. There seems to be maybe a mild effect on weight and height. Yeah. That tends to be approximately two to three years where you see that effect. But after that, for whatever reason, there's an attenuation of that effect. So that if you look at adults who've been medicated for most of their life, they are basically indistinguishable from those who didn't receive medications. In terms of cardiovascular, there have been a lot of studies on that, and two large studies, one in children, one in adults, that were um, underwritten by the Food and Drug Administration. Those studies show no cardiovascular effects of these medications on the development of new cardiovascular adverse events, even in individuals who may have had pre-existing cardiovascular problems. So again, we've gone from a lot of worry around the cardiovascular concerns to a more neutrality around that. Having said that, I want to be sure that people realize you still need to screen people to ensure that this individual is medically safe to receive a psychostimulant. Thank you so much, Dr. Williams, for great information.